<laughs> Thank you. I have no clue if this is going to change or not, so I may just end up talking for a long time. So what we're going to talk about today is WordPress website maintenance. Don't just set it and forget it. And this is our little buddy here. So we're going to start with a little trivia question. Do you know who made popular the phrase set it and forget it? Uh, the hair people. Brack? No. Uh, Tony? Close. Uh, here's, okay, here's a clue. Ronco. Yes. It was the, the turkey oven. All right, Ron Popeil, inventor and master pitch man. I don't know if you remember, like in the 70s and everything, he was on all the infomercials all, of the, all the time. So what Ron did is his whole thing was he wanted to do things to make people's lives easier, much as we do with WordPress. We want to make the web an easier, more friendly place. So uh, Ron was known for things like the pocket fisherman, the five-in-one fryer. You could fry anything in that thing. And, of course, spray hair. So making a resurgence. <laughs> absolutely, which is making a resurgence. So, um, so, so the whole just set it and forget it thing came from Ron Popeil. He had this thing called the, um, the Showtime Standard Rotisserie and Barbecue Oven. And the whole thing was you can just put a chicken in there or whatever, and you could just set it and forget it. However, there was a little caveat to that. Some people took it very literally. They set it and forget it went on vacation, came home to find their house burned down, or the whole thing melted. So just set it and forget it wasn't quite what he meant. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. There are a lot of things you can do to maintain your WordPress website that are automatic in nature, but there's always something that you're going to have to do as well. And above all, you don't ever want to just set it and forget it because um, Starting a website and then never touching it again is not the way to go. So why is maintenance important? So these are the things. Security is a biggie. When people talk about how their, web, uh, their WordPress website got hacked, a lot of times it's because they're not maintaining it properly. Um, there are mean people out there who try to inject viruses and uh, you know who find little back doors and that kind of thing. Um, Keeping your WordPress website maintained is going to keep it secure. Performance is another big thing. If it starts to get sluggish, if things just aren't working right the way they used to, then that probably means it's starting to get bloated and it needs a little love, needs a little maintenance. Bug fixes, you know, this is software, so there's always going to be some bugs. And fortunately, the WordPress community is really big on, um, you know, following those things, identifying them when they happen, and then rolling out updates pretty quickly. Same thing for the theme developers, same thing for the plugin developers. So bug fixes is always going to be a big part of it. Compatibility and new features kind of to a lesser extent, but still important. You want to make sure that your website is still compatible with all of the browsers and that your plugins are playing nicely with your themes and that everything kind of stays happy. So compatibility is another reason why you want to keep your WordPress website maintained. And then new features. People come out with cool new stuff. And if you want to use that cool new stuff, you're going to need to be sure to keep your WordPress, your plugins, and your themes, and everything updated. So who can do, who can do this maintenance? Well, your hosting company can often do a lot of this maintenance. Um, oftentimes, it's included as uh, part of their core hosting service. Uh, you can also purchase it as an add-on. A lot of hosting companies will give you more stuff, you know, that you can pay for on a, on a monthly basis to do this kind of maintenance for you. You can do it yourself. Uh, usually that's done via the hosting panel. And your website can do a lot of this stuff for you as well automatically through the use of plugins. And we're going to talk about all of those things. There are also uh, WordPress maintenance services. There are companies, third-party companies that do this kind of thing. There are agencies that do it. There are, you know, lots of companies that do this kind of thing. Um, just shop around. You know, it does cost, but you may determine that it's worth it. Uh, just, you know, just shop around and see what, what serves you best. So kind of the basics of maintenance that I'm going to talk about are backing up and restoring updating WordPress, optimizing for performance, and security scanning. So these are kind of the four things that you're always going to want to do in order to keep your WordPress website maintained. 
So let's talk about the first one, backing up and restoring. And this is so important. You're going to need to know how to do this no matter what else you do. So your host can do a lot of this backup stuff for you. And any reputable host, the good ones the blue hosts of the world, and uh, this is an example from SiteGround, which is a company we work with a lot, they're going to have this already as part of your service. So check around, look at your host now, give them a call, look at their website, and make sure that they are doing backups for you. It's very important. Things can go wrong, even in the best possible world, things can go down. So you always want to be sure that you have a backup and importantly, that you know how to go back to it, that you know how to restore from it. This is just an example from, from SiteGround's hosting features thing. Uh, you see they offer free daily backup, even at their $3.95 a month plan, even at the super cheapest plan, they're still giving you one day's worth of backup. At the higher plans, uh, you get 30 days of backup, which is good because sometimes you don't know when something went wrong so you can kind of keep rolling back. So having these backups of your website is a huge part of keeping them maintained properly. And then these restore services, um, you know, a good host is also going to be able to help you restore from an old backup. You'll really need to know how to do that before you do anything else. You, there's a DIY option. You can absolutely do this manually. Um, inside your hosting panel, Usually it's a cPanel, or Plesk has it as well. There will be little things in there. There's a backup wizard. Look for stuff like that. And then um, this bar you're ignoring is covering it up. But right here, there's a backup restore that SiteGround has. Uh, that lets you do all of this stuff yourself. It's very important to do that. Um, one thing I want to mention that I forgot to mention at the top, I'm probably going to be asking you as we go, you know, who uses this, who's familiar with this, and that may prompt some questions, and I want to be able to answer all of the questions completely. So if we can kind of hold them till the end, um, that would be awesome. Thank you. <coughs> Covering a lot of information. Um, using a plugin on your WordPress website is another way to, to do these backups, and there are a lot of really popular plugins. The most important thing is to be sure that the plugin allows you to restore from the backup as well. And I, I keep saying that, but it's because a lot of plugins and a lot of services will say, sure, we'll keep backups of your website. And then when you request it, they send it to you in this like crazy zipped up file and it's just a bunch of things and there's a database. And unless you're pretty skilled and comfortable in that kind of world, you wanna be sure that you can do it with one or two clicks. You want to see a list of your backups. You want to be able to go click, restore backup from whatever date. These are four plugins that do that. Backup Buddy, very popular. BackWP Up, Updraft Plus, and Vault Press is part of Jetpack. Um, you may have that automatically installed on your site. Uh, Vault Press is actually run by Automatic, same company that does WordPress, so those things are pretty compatible. Not all of these are free. They, um, there may be a subscription fee for some of them, but I'm telling you if, you, if something goes kaboom on your website, you want to be sure that you have it backed up. So this is another approach to do it as well. So backing up, you've got your host, may do it as part of their regular service. You've got you, you can do it through cPanel and you've got plugins that can do it as well. So the next thing is updating WordPress, and this is non-negotiable. A lot of times when we hear that a WordPress uh, website isn't working correctly, what we find out is that they're on WordPress 2.7, or the plugins haven't been backed up in forever, so there's a lot of really old, sketchy stuff still on there, and the internet moves fast. So you want to be sure that what you have is up to date. Again, this can be done by your host. A lot of hosts offer this service. Uh, call them, get on their website, see if they offer auto WP backups as part of their service. Uh, you can set this up, take a look in your hosting panel and see if you see something similar to WP auto update. One thing to keep in mind is that most hosting services will only 
back up your core WordPress and get it up to the current version. They won't necessarily back up your plugins and your themes, so you may still have to do some stuff yourself. But fortunately, WordPress makes it super easy. Doing it yourself, so tiny. These slides will all be available, but let me just show you the general area you're gonna look in. In the back end of your website and your dashboard, you'll see a little thing that says updates. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little red circle next to it, and it's got a number in it. You may have seen this in the back end of your own WordPress website. That's just telling you that updates are currently available. And you can click right in there, and it will take you to a screen that looks like this. It'll tell you that an updated version, you notice the very first thing it says is please back up your website. Um, but it'll tell you that an updated version of WordPress is available. There's a one-click update now. All of the plugins that are available, it'll give you a list of those. And then all of the themes that are available, and they're often the WordPress pre-installed themes, 2016 and that kind of thing. It'll tell you what, uh, when there are theme updates available as well. One thing I love about this screen is that in the plugins section, it'll say compatibility with WordPress, whatever version, in this case 4.7, 100% according to its author. Sometimes it will say unknown. If it says unknown, just write that down before you do your plugin updates, because all that means is that they don't know if it's going to work with the current version of WordPress or not. So what could happen is that you'll go through all of this and you'll get this, lovingly referred to as the white screen of death. So the white screen of death um, just means that something's broken, something's gone wrong. But if you saw my plug-in thing here last year, it's not a situation you can't recover from. It's nothing to freak out about or get too scared about because you can roll back to a backup. That's why we need a backup. Um, if this happens, don't be afraid to update. It just means that do things one at a time because maybe that one that doesn't work, you don't want to use, maybe you can disable it. You know it's going to cause a problem. The other thing you can do is just don't update your WordPress yet until that plugin author gets the plugin up to speed. But that plugin page is really helpful in terms of letting you know what the pieces are. Um, keeping, these things, keeping these things up to date is vital. It's the most important thing to do. Updating with the plugin, not really applicable because WordPress has the functionality that I just showed you. It's built into WordPress. You don't add, have to add another thing to your site in order to be able to update your WordPress stuff uh, from the back end. But wait, there's more. So there's our friend Ron again, who also invented Mr. Microphone. Um, so just another little trivia piece. Ron is also the guy who invented, he says, but wait, there's more. So moving on, optimizing for performance is one of those things that uh, you want to be sure to do. Th again, this isn't like a necessary thing. Your site isn't necessarily going to crash. But while you're in there doing this other stuff, make sure that you check it to make sure that it's not too sluggish, uh, to make sure that everything is working the way that it should. Uh, your host doesn't usually do this. Now I put in a ish. Because hosts will do things like offer caching plugins or server performance tweaks or that kind of thing that can help your performance. Um, those, will, those will usually just be a part of your hosting package. They won't necessarily be something that you'll ask them to do. Um, but a good host is going to be sure that your site is running well or they're, they're going um, to pay attention to keeping things properly properly running from a host perspective. So manually, the DIY version, uh, we love a tool called GT Metrics. It's free. You can go to gtmetrics.com and plug in your, your website URL, and it will return a performance score. So it gives you a score up there, and then it lists all of this stuff. And this can get super geeky 
but if you click on any one of these things, it will give you suggestions about what to do. Usually, to be honest, if your site gets slow, it's due to images, because a lot of people, when they put images up on their website, they just took them, take them straight out of their high-def camera and put them right into their website, and things get really slow. So usually what it'll say is be sure that all of your images are optimized. But GT Metrics is a great tool that will let you do, um, that will let you locate all of the issues with your website performance-wise and tell you how to fix them. And then there are plugins. Um, WP Smush, there's a pro version, uh, but there's a free version just called WP Smush. It's one of the most popular image optimization plugins out there. What it does is uh, if you put, now it does have like a 32 meg limit, so if you put a 100 meg image on your website, it's not gonna work. But it will take all the images that you put on your website and then it'll run them through a filter and compress them. So having WP Smush on your website is a pretty great thing, especially if you have a website that has a lot of images, photography website, if you're blogging and you're using, you know, and you should be using an image with every blog post that you do, um, it will, it'll literally smush those down. SEO friendly images I put up here, it's not necessarily something that will make your perform, it's, its primary purpose isn't to make your performance better, its primary purpose is to add alt tags to your images to help for your search engine optimization. But everything you do to help the computer and the browser's brain know what your image is, is gonna increase your site. So that's another really good one to have around. And then WP Optimize runs toward the geeky end, but it's good to have. Because a lot of times what happens is your database can just get really messy. There are old revisions in there, there's caching, there's overhead, all of this stuff. And this WP Optimize plugin, you can set it, and it will go through regularly and just clean that database up. So those are the optimizations. And then the last thing I want to talk about is security scanning. Um, again, your host may provide this as an option. Uh, SiteGround uses uh, something called SG Site Scanner. It used to be called Hack Alert Monitoring. I think it's $5 a month. I think Bluehost has, has a version of this as well. And it's just a way that they sort of constantly keep an eye on your site. They run it through scanners. Um, Securi is probably the best, most popular, number one awesome um, website security tool out there. You'll hear about it a lot. Uh, so what's, what, site, what SiteGround does is they just keep your site scanned and then they'll send you a little email that says, we didn't find any malware, we're not on any blacklists, that kind of thing. They won't fix it for you, but they will alert you to those kinds of things. They also do cool stuff like if somebody tries to hack your website, usually the way they can tell is that they're trying to log in a gabillion times. Um, if they see that somebody's trying to log in a gabillion times with the wrong password, they'll just shut that IP out. They'll just block that IP, and that's a really useful thing. So um, see if your host provides security scanning as part of your package. Did I mention Securi? Um, Securi also has a, a do-it-yourself option. You can subscribe to Securi. It's $199 a year and so worth it because then you just plain don't have to worry. Um, some sites, you know, are probably not as exposed as others, but if you have e-commerce on your site, if you're working for a large organization, if you get a lot of traffic, if you're talking about controversial <coughs> things, um, there are kind of some low-hanging fruit for hackers. Uh, Securi will, will keep track of all of that, and then the, the annual um, subscription, this $199 thing, does not just scanning, but then they also put tools on there to protect it as well. So they kind of bubble wrap your site. So it's really worth it. We use this on, we use this on all of our websites. And security.net is, the, is the, the domain for that. And then there, there are plugins, of course, that will do this as well. WordFence is a very popular plugin. A lot of people use it. Um, 
the thing about word fence is it can slow your site down a little because it, because it's doing it's kind of kerchunking constantly and it can sort of drag your your site speed down a little bit so you might want to disable it when you're working on your site and then re-enable it uh, bulletproof security I've never used but it's it's also very popular and then of course security has um, has a free plug-in that they'll put on your website as well so having a plug-in on your back end to um, to help with your security is a really good idea so with all apologies to Ron, we would say don't just set it and forget it. There's a lot that you can do uh, to, that's automatic, but in general, you, if you want your website to be secure and to continue to run well, you will need to maintain it properly. Um, that's it, that's me. Uh, if you wanna contact us, go to andysites.com. There's a big red contact us button in the top. And if you have any questions uh, that occur to you after the questions I'm about to take, then by all means, um, please get in touch. And also, if you just have something about your particular situation uh, that we don't get time to talk about today, please let me know. But, open for questions. Yes? The security, uh, $199. Is that per website? They actually have a package. The more you order, the lower the price gets. So I think it's like one website, five websites, ten websites, and then it kind of goes, you know. So, yeah. Volume discounts. Anybody else? Yes. You know, fortunately, WordPress has gotten so smart lately. It used to be that when we updated WordPress, we kind of hid and crossed our eyes and crossed all of our fingers and held our breath. Um, fortunately, those days are over. The only, the, only, um, the only time we see that happen now is with a sketchy plugin. Like sometimes there will be plugins that just aren't good plugins. They're not regularly updated. Um, it's one of the things we talked about last year is when you're choosing a plugin, make sure that it's well supported, that you can contact the developer, it's highly ranked. A lot of people are using it. But in general, um, yes, it could break, in which case you'd roll to a backup. But uh, WordPress updates these days are pretty stable. So yes, you should definitely do it. In the back? Questions related. So, you should update the plugins first and then WordPress. Ideally, yes. Okay. Yeah. So theoretically, you also shouldn't be using sketchy plugins. Use ones that are well established and well updated. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you just the the thirty second version of that, as you're choosing a plugin, look at the star rating. Look at the number of users. You know, the higher the better and look to see when it was last updated. If it was last updated three weeks ago, that means they're keeping pace with WordPress. If it was last <coughs> updated three years ago, I'd find a better plugin. Had somebody over here? I had the same question. Yeah. Okay, Thank good, you. yeah. Yes? So with like the WP Smush plugin uh -huh. you're talking about, will that go through all of your back images too? Yeah, it'll go through everything that's on there. So when you first put WP Smush on your site, um, You'll go in to your, to you, where it says media a lot, you know your media, and then it'll drop down and it'll say WP Smush. And then, the, so the very first time that you do it, it will smush all your images. Just go get a cup of coffee, check back later, because it takes a while. After that, you can set it to automatically smush each new image that goes okay. in. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. You talked about the max for smush, but there's also a minimum of one megabyte before it will smush in my experience. Yeah, good point. So if you're in that, like, 800, 900, maybe like no man's land. Right. It won't actually. Yeah, that's true. It won't touch all of your images. That's, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you know, and if, you're, if, if your site isn't able to handle an image that's lower than a meg, then you may want to look at a, another host. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yes? It said uh, WP Smush Pro yeah. on your slide. You know, WP Smush Pro has, it has some additional features. I think I honestly just used that because I thought it was a prettier graphic. <laughs> WP Smush doesn't really have a good graphic. 
um, because they want you to buy the pro. But start with the pro, I mean, start with the free, and then um, it will tell you, just like with all the free plugins that have a pro version, they're always going to go, hey, you interested in our pro? Here's what you could get. Um, I don't find many situations where the pro is necessary, to be honest. Um, may, it gives you some more, uh, it gives you a few more settings, different scheduling, different upper, upper lower limits, stuff like that. But for most purposes, the free should be fine for you. I know. Yes? Um, you think, I know, this slide is coming in, but no, no. do you think merchants have to be optimized for a database management? Yeah. Or what are the typical things that you would look for and actually do using that? Yeah, so it does. Um, so what WP Optimize does is it, you can set, like, keep the last 10 revisions, but it'll delete all the other old, old revisions. Um, because WordPress automatically keeps revisions. You make a change to a page or to a post, and you click that revision thing at the top, and you can see all of them. Well, it'll go on forever. So it'll clean those out. It will clean out any database overhead, which is just all that, all that junky little code that it makes when you, um, maybe when you make five different versions of an image, you know, that kind of thing. It will, it's, it, it, it takes out caching, um, and so primary. Do you do, um, deleting any like old plugin tables that were not deleted before? I think it does. Alex, do you know, like in database optimization? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think there is an option in there that will let you uh, just take a look at it in the repository. Just look it up, and it'll tell you what all of the, all the possible settings are. Now, it is one that they update often. The, the, the plugin authors are really on top of this thing. So, yeah, so see, see what all it does in there. Which one did she say? The, the D DB Optimize, the WP DB Optimize. <coughs> I, uh, I have a half a dozen or a dozen sites, hobby sites and client sites, but I use WP Manage yeah. so that I don't have to go individually to each one of them. So Absolutely. So let me, let me talk about what she's, um, what she's referring to, WP Manage or Manage WP, depending on what you want to call it. It's called both things. Uh, Manage WP is a subscription-based service, but it's really cool. If you have a lot of websites, um, Manage WP, I think for like 49 bucks a month or something like that. I'm on a $20 plan because I have less than 10, I have 10 sites. Perfect. And this is actually what a lot of agencies use too. Like people, people like us who do this kind of thing will use Manage WP dashboard. Um, what you can do is, is you can put your site in there. It'll connect. It'll put a little plug in on the back end of your site. And it, it's called Manage WP Worker. And it will do all of this stuff for you. You have to push a button, but you can update your plugins, update your themes, update your WordPress. It has a database cleaner, so it'll clean all of your table overhead. It'll get rid of it'll get rid of comment spam. That's another thing that the database thing does. It gets gets rid of comment spam and old comments. Um, it will do all of these things. And it also, which is kind of fun, is it gives you a single place to log in as well. So you can log in from Manage WP to all of your sites. So if you have several sites that you need to maintain, definitely look at Manage WP. And it was recently bought by GoDaddy. Um, so so they're, they're getting a little better on, um, not that I'm a fan of GoDaddy as a hosting service, but uh, one thing that they did do is they streamlined a lot of the features. So. And it, it is literally a one-click. I don't usually hit the nuclear option and say update absolutely everything on every scary. site I have. Scary. Too scary. But you can go in and say, okay, update all the WordPress themes, whatever. But it's the kind of thing where you could do that for your clients and then charge them $50 a month for maintenance. Um, and you've got something keeping an eye on everything without you having to manually log into every site. Yeah, and it will also give you, it'll do like, it, it hooks into Pingdom, so you'll get a notification if your site goes down. It, you can do Google Analytics in it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that it does. It's a, it's a really cool tool. Anybody else? Is anybody familiar with these tools? Have you, does anybody use these? Who, who uh, well, I won't ask. I won't ask who doesn't maintain their WordPress website because you're all going to now, right?
right? But um, had, have any, has anybody run into any problems in the past that were maintenance related? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny. It's just one of those things. You get a WordPress website and a lot of people just walk away and think that they're done. And they can be, but you really do want to keep giving it some love and care. Anybody else? All right. Thank you so much. Please get in touch. <laughs>